Hello everybody and welcome to the second part of the chapter gravitation. Now let's do a quick recap of what we saw in part 1. If you haven't seen part 1 already, please go back and watch part 1. So in part 1, we saw introduction to gravity. We saw a little about person behind the discovery of gravity that is Sir Isaac Newton. And we saw what was centripetal force. And lastly, we covered what was gravitational force. So in today's chapter, let us study the universal law of gravitation. Now the universal law of gravitation states that every object in the universe attracts every other object with a force which is proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So if you see, there are two components in this law. The first one states that the gravitational force is proportional to the product of their masses. And the second part says that it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Okay, so there are two different parts to this. Let us study this more clearly with an example. If you see here, we have two objects. We have one object which is A. Let's call this object A. And we have another object B. And these two have their specific masses. Suppose the mass of A is M and the mass of B is small m. Okay, so they are separated with a distance between them. Let's consider the distance between them as D. Suppose this is the distance D separates the two objects A and B. And uh, let's say that there is a force that is attracting both of them. And let's consider the force to be F. Okay, so F is nothing but the force that is attracting these two objects. Now, according to the universal law of gravity, F is directly proportional to the product of the masses. Okay, so this is the first part here that we have. Part 1 says that it is proportional to the product of their masses. So that is capital F is proportional to the mass of A and mass of B. So this is the first equation that we have. What does the second part of it say? The second part of the law states that it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So inverse proportionality, we will say it as 1 by whatever it is. So that is force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. We know that the distance between them is D. So the square of the distance between them, so that is 1 by D. This will be considered as the second equation. So by combining these two equations, we get another equation which is F is proportional to the product of their masses divided by the square of the distance between them. Okay, now we don't want to keep this proportionality as it is, so we will convert this into a constant. So we finally end up with an equation that is F is equal to G into mass of one object, into mass of another object, the whole divided by the square of the distance between them. Okay, so you end up with an equation like this where G, this G is nothing but the constant of gravity. Okay, so this G is nothing but the universal gravitational constant. Now, if we try to play around with this equation a little, if we try to twist and turn it, we will get G is equal to, suppose we need to know what G is, we can't just give a constant, we must find out the value of the constant. So that's why we'll try to find out how we can find out G. So G, if we try to cross multiply this, we will get F into D2 divided by M into M. That is, we're taking this D this side, so it becomes F into D2. And this product of masses also, we will shift it to the other side. So we end up with an equation like this. So this is an equation that we get. So what is the SI unit of G? We know the SI units of all of this. So the SI unit of G is got by substituting the units of force, distance as well as mass. Newton, meter square per kg square. Okay, so Newton is the SI unit of force, meter square is the SI unit of distance and kg square is nothing but the SI unit of mass. When we add up the SI units of these three, we get the SI unit of gravity which is Newton 
meter square per kg square. So the value of G was found by a scientist named Henry Cavendish by using sensitivity balance. And uh, it is still accepted till date, the value of G, which was found to be 6.673 into 10 to the power of minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square. Okay, so this is the value of G that we know, which was founded by Henry Cavendish. Now, if we have to understand all of this that we've studied with an example, let's consider a problem now. Now, this is a problem that has been given to us. It states that the mass of Earth, 6 into 10 to the power of 24 kgs, and the mass of Moon is 7.4 into 10 to the power of 22 kgs. And it says that the distance between them is 3.84 into 10 to the power of 5 kilometers. So, we have to calculate the force that is exerted by the Earth on the Moon. Now, we already know previously, thanks to Henry Cavendish, that the value G is 6.7 into 10 to the power of minus 11 Newton meter square per kg square. So, before we get into it, what is the formula that we will use? We will use the formula F is equal to G into the product of the masses divided by the distance, square of the distance between them. So, before we get into the details, let's first write down what all we know so far. So we know the distance they have already given. They have said that the distance between them. So distance is nothing but 3.84 into 10 to the power of 5 kilometers. Now, if you remember, we are talking about the distance as meters and not kilometers. But they have given us kilometers. So we have to convert this into meters. How do we convert it? We are going to multiply it by 1000 because 1000 meters make 1 kilometer. So that is 3.84 into 10 to the power of 5 into 1000 which will give us the answer in meters. So that is 0 0.84 into, so number of zeros here is 3. So we are going to add two exponents 5 plus 3 which will be 8, 10 to the power of 8. So this is in terms of meters now. Okay, so we know the distance. So this part of it is taken care of. Now, what are the masses that we know? Capital M, the mass of the earth we know is 6 into 10 to the power of 24 kgs. And small m, which is the mass of moon, we know is 7.4 into 10 to the power of 22 kgs. And we already know g which is the constant here now all we need to do is substitute these values here so let us substitute the values the first one we have is 6.7 into 10 to the power of minus 11 so we have the si unit as well newton meter square per kg square okay now the whole thing we we'll put it here what is capital m it is 6 into 10 to the power of 24 into 7.4 into 10 to the power of 22 the whole thing divided by the square of the distance what is the distance we saw that was 3.84 into 10 to the power of 8 square okay now let's bring out our little calculator now the first thing we have to remember is wherever we have these exponents Wherever we are multiplying it, we are going to add the exponents. We won't be multiplying the exponents. So if we have 24 and 22, we'll be adding 24 plus 22. The same thing because we're squaring here, we won't square the exponents. We'll simply be adding it so that we become 8 plus 8. So same thing, please remember when it's exponents, you'll be adding or subtracting the exponents. You won't be multiplying them actually. So here we'll simply be multiplying these values. So the mass square 6 into 7.4 you have. So the answer that you will get is 44.4. Okay, so remember 44.4. Whereas if you square 3.84 into... 3.84 you get 14.745 okay so let's write this down first so we have 
6.7 we're going to write this as it is okay and we got 44.4 into 10 to the power what will you get when you add 24 and 22 you end up with 46 divided by when you square 3.84 you get 14.745 into 10 to the power of 8 plus 8 is 16 so you get 16 now when we divide these two we will subtract 16 in 46 because this goes up it will get subtracted so the answer that we will end up with is 6.7 into 10 to the power of minus 11 into 3.011 into 10 to the power of 30 because 46 minus 16 you get 30 and if you try and divide 44.4 divided by 14.745 you will get 3.011 now if you multiply these two 3.011 into 6.7 you will get 20.17 okay so you get an answer which is 20.17 into now this is minus 11 this is 30 so 30 minus 11 you will get 19 so it is 10 to the power of 19 it's 10 to the power of 19 now we don't want to keep it as 10 to the power of 19 we want to round it off to 20 so we are going to shift this decimal point this side so finally we end up with an answer which is 2.01 into 10 to the power of 20 what is the si unit of force si unit of force is newton so we will write down the si unit of force newton so finally the answer that we came up with is 2.01 into 10 to the power of 20 newtons so now you've learned how we can use this particular formula to find out the force or the gravitational force between two objects once we get the mass and the distance between them because we already know the g is a constant let's see the importance of universal law of gravity so this law successfully explains a lot of phenomena which are believed to be unconnected now what are these let's see the first one is it explains the force that binds us to the earth now we know that we are not floating in air right we are walking on earth we are able to walk jump and run on earth law of gravitation explains why we are stuck on earth the second one it explains the motion of the moon around the earth in the previous part we saw how the earth was pulling the moon towards itself because of which it is in orbit now that is explained by the universal law of gravitation thirdly the motion of the planets around the sun is also explained by the universal law of gravitation lastly it also explains the tides due to moon and sun now the tides in the ocean keep changing according to the position of the moon and the sun that is also explained by the universal law of gravity so with this we complete part two of the chapter if you have any doubts at all please write to us if you like the video please hit the like button please subscribe and share this video with your friends thank you